All right. It is rolling. Clock has started. Victor, what is your question? All right. So I'm just curious on kind of your elaboration on um, when somebody has a gain, let's say hip internal rotation, how do you in general go about superimposing force production on that newly acquired range of motion? I can't imagine that just because they have the range of motion that they'll use it appropriately, but maybe <laughs> not sure. So I just want to hear you clear that up. Okay. Uh, just in general. So, so when you say use it appropriately, the, the thing that we have to, to have in place is the context in which it's going to be applied. So, so if we were just talking about walking versus throwing a baseball, okay? Very similar um, in regard to uh, the, the phases of propulsion, but how you would produce that might be different because of physical structure and because of how they're producing internal rotation. So when you say internal rotation, it's like, okay, is this relative motion at the hip or is it a compensatory strategy to drive force into the ground to a greater degree, which I might use an anterior orientation because that increases the amount of force that I can apply into the ground. So again, we have, we have to be very contextual with this and okay. progressive. So, well, sorry, uh, uh, if, if you think about, so you just acquired, let's just say you acquired relative motion of internal rotation on the table, okay? Mm -hmm. As soon as I take you out of that context, I've just changed everything about the strategy that you would have to use because I've, I would have reoriented gravity. I have actually increased the force demands upon you. And then I'm gonna move you into a context where we now have seven components of force to deal with, right? So the magnitude of the force matters, the rate of the force application matters, right? So, so again, we have multiple influences now that we have to account for as to what strategy you will, you will utilize because as you move into higher and higher force production, you will lose relative motion. It is, it is inevitable because you cannot produce a higher peak force with relative motion. Motion has to actually stop for you to apply that force into the ground. And so over what duration do we need to apply this force? Um, give you a comparison. A max effort squat. So I put 400 pounds in your back, right? And you perform a squat. The duration of your, of your peak force output is going to increase, right? It takes a little bit longer for you to get through that, that that phase of peak force. If you were using half of that weight, perform the same activity, it would be a much smaller representation um, based on time. Because again, you can move that weight much more quickly. You can still be very, very forceful, but because the acceleration, the acceleration is higher, it's a shorter duration um, where you would be exposed to that peak force. So, so it requires a very specific context. And this might be something that a lot of people might not recognize is because they just make an assumption that's like, oh, you have internal rotation now, now you have the capacity to do this. Like, not necessarily, right? And, the, and this, this becomes problematic when you're working in the athletic realm, um, mm -hmm. physical structure is gonna determine how you apply forces to the ground, um, what durations you have available to you. So a narrow ISA individual, so like take the extreme narrow ISA, Okay, they have a very small window of opportunity to apply force into the ground because they don't have the shape change that that produces the maximum force into the ground, right? Okay. So uh, take a high jumper, like a really good high jumper. Okay, if they apply force into the ground too long, they dampen. Okay? Right. Okay. Because their window by their physical structure alone. So this is a physical structure thing. It's like, you, you look at the best high jumpers in the world, they all kind of look the same, right? Yeah. Like, like what the, the Olympics are like one of the greatest representations of the influence of physical structure, right? Um, you, you take a, uh, uh, take the best high jumper and then have them stand next to the best shot putter. Two totally different worlds. Yeah. Both human. <laughs> Both same body parts, 
different physical structures. And therefore the, the way that they apply forces into the ground are gonna be different. Um, the outcomes are obviously going to be different. Their connective tissue behavior is going to be different. And, and so then you have to account for this. It's like, so I got a high jumper that has, <clears throat> that needs a tremendous amount of uh, um, internal rotation into the ground over a very short period of time, but he needs to access that that internal rotation directly, well, it's like slightly in front of his center of gravity. Okay, now take the center of gravity of the shot putter. He's gonna use a lot more orientation to apply that force in the ground because he's got a longer period of time that he can apply that force to the ground. Okay, his force needs to be a lot, like his peak force is going to be probably very, very high, right? Because he's got to move an implement. Okay, you see the differences when you say, how do you progress somebody, you know? with, with this is with... the black and white answer, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, <laughs> it's, it's rarely that, but, but, yeah. but, but, it's, but it is principle-based. You just have to sure. recognize what the principles are. It's not, again, this is why the, the, the generic program <clears throat> concept, you know, it's like you apply the same program to two different people. Why do you get two different outcomes? Well, because the starting conditions were different and therefore yeah. the outcomes will be different. And, and that's the thing you have to, to kind of recognize. And so, so you take, again, just, just fall back on basic principles. Um, we could use the two extremes. So, so it's like, what kind of an archetype are we looking at? What kind of a configuration do they have in the, in the relationships between the thorax and the pelvis in regards to, to circumference? Because that determines how easily they're able to move their center of gravity upward and downward. Um, it's gonna tell you how long they spend on the ground. It's gonna tell you how big their, their, their middle propulsive representation is. A wide ISA individual has a much broader uh, duration and physical space to apply forces to the ground, a narrow does not. That's why when you when you see the 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 tall, slender folks that come in um, to to the clinic, you know, with painful situations, they're trying to apply forces into the ground in an ER representation because they spend more time in that space because their physical structure says, guess what, you're going to spend more time in that space no matter what you do. And so that's that's that becomes the difficulty. So as simple as your question seems to be, there is complexity in it, but you can fall back on your principles and you say, okay, where, where is this person going to apply that force? In what circumstance do they apply that force? At what rate do they apply that force? Because I have a time constraint under most situations, right? What direction is that force being applied? So there's a few questions to answer, but they are, I think they are answerable and then you'd rely on process after that, where you say, okay, here's what I thought was going on. Here's what I thought we needed to do. And here was the outcome. Is that favorable? Good. Then let's, then let's uh, amplify that and let's reinforce it and see what happens. Was it, the, was it the less desired outcome? Okay, let's dampen that. Let's try another strategy, right? And, and again, you have to be incremental in your process. Right, because you just don't know. I mean, it, 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 we we can we can talk on 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 principle, but you don't know until you do something.